Hello, I'm Maria van der Hoeven, head of the International Energy Agency, the IEA. I started my career as a teacher, and that's partly why I wish to speak with you, today's youth, about the defining challenge of our time, limiting climate change. The IEA works to ensure secure and sustainable energy sources, to support our economic growth and social development. We care deeply about the emerging global challenge of climate change because the energy sector generates nearly 70% of the emissions that drive this change. And climate change will in turn affect how we use energy. Climate change threatens to increase the intensity of storms, floods and droughts, to raise sea levels, disrupt ocean ecosystems and create food shortages. It threatens our economies, our societies, our families. But together we can overcome this challenge. I want to tell you about some of the challenges the world faced during my lifetime. And this may explain why we, adults, have been slow to respond to this new challenge of climate change and why we need your help. I was born in 1949 in the Netherlands and the world knew little of climate change, but a lot about war. People were focused on rebuilding shattered lives and countries after the Second World War. We needed energy from fossil fuels to redevelop our economies, provide food and water, improve education and health, and fight poverty. The world's population was roughly 2.5 billion, and our energy sector produced 7 billion tons of CO2 per year. Over the next several decades, we overcame many challenges of my youth. Europe had rebuilt, Diseases that had plagued generations were eradicated, food production grew, and economies were growing worldwide. And I became a school teacher, and by the 1980s was director of a job training school. The world's population had grown to 5 billion, and our energy sector emissions had risen to 20 billion tons of CO2. Global economic growth continued into the 90s, powered by increasing use of fossil fuels. And this is also when concerns about climate change first came to the global stage. We had our first international treaty on climate change. And it's also when many of you were born. And during this period, I entered politics, eventually serving as my country's energy minister. Over the last 60 years, the world has made great progress with the challenges of my youth. And in 1981, more than half of the world's population lived on less than one euro a day. Today, it's less than a quarter of the population. Sanitation, education, health and infrastructure have improved. And while much remains to be done, including providing electricity access to the 1.3 billion who still go without, the improvements worldwide have been remarkable. But with the rise in living standards has also come increasing energy consumption and carbon dioxide emissions. And we are now producing over 30 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year just from the energy sector. If we continue with business as usual, we are on track for a world about 4 degrees Celsius warmer. And this would entail potentially catastrophic impacts. Displacing hundreds of millions of people from their homes, food shortages from water scarcity and scorching summer heat, and halting the growth of coral reefs and dissolving many of them disrupting the ocean ecosystems we rely on. If we can limit the temperature rise to 2 degrees, we can avoid the worst. To do this, we need to reduce emissions from the energy sector, specifically from fossil fuels. On this graph, you see the large increase in energy sector emissions since 1990. We need to change course to avoid a world 4 degrees warmer. To limit the global temperature increase to no more than 2 degrees, emissions need to peak before 2020 and then decline. So we need to dramatically change the ways we produce and consume energy. And this graph runs to 2050, when you will nearly be my age. So this revolution must happen in your lifetime and must take hold this decade. We must do three things. Make a dramatic shift to renewable energy sources like wind, solar and hydropower. Use energy more efficiently. With careful use, we can support economic growth for more people while protecting our climate and environment. And reduce emissions from our fossil fuel use, 
because we will use these fuels for the foreseeable future, we must use less of the most polluting ones, such as coal, and capture and store some of their emissions. To make these things happen, we need local, national and international policies that deliver both emissions reductions and continued economic and social development. My most important message to you is to embrace your influence. You have growing importance, particularly on climate change, because it's your future and your voice carries great weight. And I have three specific requests. Learn more about the issue and find reliable sources. The more widely informed you are, the more you can influence the debate. Engage others, discuss what you can do, reach out to your parents, to your teachers, to leaders, and do not underestimate your growing ability to influence. And be accountable for your own carbon footprint. There are small steps we can all take which add up to big effects and that are also an important part of increasing global awareness. And you can see several ways to start on our IE website under our 25 bright ideas for energy efficiency. By 2050, our planet is projected to be home to 9 billion people. When you look to your future, when you and your generation are my age and are leaders of the world, what changes will you have made? If we continue with business as usual, the energy system is on track to emit 40 gigatons of CO2 and the planet could be heading for 4 degrees warming. But if we transform the energy system, we could be emitting just 16 gigatons and staying below 2 degrees. To make this transformation, we need ambition, strong action and your engagement so that you will have a happy story to tell the children that follow you.